Uh, I mean, yeah, it's all media driven. I mean, no one's really coming out saying one thing or the other in terms of Mariota and, and what's going on a lot with a lot behind the scenes is kind of misdirection and uh, lies. Uh, so, again, as I've been saying all along, anyone who's saying they know what Chip Kelly's going to do and they're lying because he doesn't talk to anybody. Um, but what we do know is that he, you know, he, he thinks Chip, he thinks Marcus Mariota is the top quarterback um, in the draft. And we do know obviously of his uh, affinity for Mariota. Um, so I've said all along that I think he'll be willing to look into whatever it took to get Mariota. All that being said, it's going to be <laughs> difficult to pull off um, because he, they're obviously competing against other teams uh, and they still have to figure out what they're going to do with Sam Bradford. Yeah, the Bradford thing's interesting. Uh, John Canzano from the Oregonian tweeted, cover Chip Kelly long enough to know he gets what he wants. All We all know what he wants in this draft. There's a visor at the poker table. He's basically suggesting that this is going to happen. Do you think Chip Kelly, he has mentioned before, I'm not going to mortgage the future, we're not going to go up for any one player, but is that just him? Does he care if he looks like a complete ass if he makes that comment and then does it? No, I mean, I, I think I wrote this at the at the time he, uh, he said that last March. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he had thrown out there that he'd received a first round pick offer for Bradford, and um, had become had come out so adamantly against doing, um, you know, moving up for Mariota that it suggested to me that maybe um, the press conference was solely based on the fact that he wanted to kind of put this information out there for for other teams. Um, so if he was going to end up making the move for Mariota. It wouldn't matter what he had said. Everyone would forget about it, especially in this town, because he had gotten what he uh, wanted. Of course, you know, he could always kind of come back and say, well, to us, this wasn't mortgaging the future or, um, you know, things changed, right. which is uh, within everyone's right. So I, I don't think he really cares that much about that. Uh, but again, you know, there have been plenty of times where Chip Kelly hasn't gotten what he wanted. Um, you know, he didn't want to have, uh, he wanted to get uh, Odell Beckham last year, apparently, and he didn't get him. So, I just, you know, again, I think he wants to get Mariota. I think he'll do whatever it takes to get Mariota. But, again, will he have uh, that luxury? I'm not so sure about that. I think what you're hearing now uh, is strictly media-driven. Jeff McLean from the Inquirer here on 97.3 ESPN. Uh, Ed Manowitz did speak today, and uh, we'll get into his comments in a second. You know, it's funny because all the – now I say all of a sudden. It seems like every day somebody else is like – well, reports the Chargers and Eagles are exploring the possibility of trading up for Marcus Mariota. Is this because people are basically filtering stuff out there, or is there new information that is kind of coming out there that makes connecting the dots easier? Uh, I mean, just to repeat myself, uh, yeah, I mean, mostly misdirection and lies, or they're, you're getting it third or fourth or fifth hand. Um, you know, generally. Let's see, that trade, for instance, makes almost no sense to me if you're talking about a three-way trade mm-hmm. with the Titans, the Chargers, and the Eagles. Well, who do, what quarterback, I mean, what quarterback do the Titans and the Chargers end up with? I guess the Titans would get what? Phillip Rivers, right? Right, but then who do the Chargers get? Sam Bradford? Why would they want Sam Bradford? Yeah. So you, you got you to gotta think past, uh, you know, you got to think a few steps ahead. Sure. Um, there's uh, and that's why a lot of these these uh, proposed trades that everyone keeps throwing out there just a lot of them just don't make any sense. Jeff, let me ask you this then about Bradford. Do you feel that Bradford around the league had more value on draft day than Foles did, and that Kelly said, "Look, I'll be okay if I don't get a deal done with Bradford, but he gives me a better chance to move than Foles did." Uh, I mean, there's that possibility. No, but I. But, uh, but I, I really think that they made the move because you know, they thought the Bradford was going to make a better team than Nick Foles. I mean, um, again, it's they can't, he, Chip Kelly has the 20th pick. He doesn't have the number two pick. Mario, it sounds like it's very uh, hard to believe that he's going to get past the number two pick. So there's a lot that has to fall for the Eagles. There's a lot that they have to do for him to get Marcus Mariota. So you have to start planning your future without – Marcus Mariota, right? And I think um, the Eagles felt like that felt that Bradford made him a better team. Made made him a better team. They felt that he was better than Nick Foles, and I think you could say that. Um, you know, barring 
uh, obviously further injury to Bradford. And I think that, first and foremost, was the reason for making the trade um, for Bradford. Now, you can throw in there maybe um, they thought that there were a few teams that would want Bradford, such as the Browns, and maybe that would help assist them in getting him in the draft. But that seems like an extremely uh, risky move for anybody to make. And I know everyone's like, well, with Chip Kelly, he can do everything. I don't think he's insane. Uh, I don't think he's just getting Sam Bradford just because he feels like it's going to be eventual, an eventual trade chip to move up for uh, Marcus Mariota. Okay, Jeff McLean's with us here as the Eagles are one week away from the draft. Ed Manowitz, uh, today, what stood out to you, you know, learning some things from him from the first time speaking as the general manager? What were some of the key points uh, that he brought up today in his meeting with you guys? Oh, well, I mean, he, of course, he talked about the Mariota thing. Uh, I thought it was interesting when, when he was asked about, you know, he said he agreed with Chip that he didn't want to, the Eagles don't want to mortgage the future for, to move up in the draft. But um, there is certainly an internal number of picks that they'd be willing to give up uh, to move up uh, or without having to, quote, unquote, risk mortgaging the future. Uh, he was asked about uh, his philosophy in terms of the draft when it came to, you know, best, best available player versus need. Uh, Polly Roseman over the last several years has been big on the we'll just take the best available player. Uh, I don't think that was always true, but Ed's like, I'll take it one step further and say that, you know, we'll take the best available player for us and for what we want to do systematically. Um, and I think that's generally how most teams feel about it. Eagles maybe perhaps a little more so because they have the system of, you know, what they, what they're looking in a player. It's based on a lot of times, you know, size uh, and speed. Um, then you then you get into the scheme fit, and then you get into the character part of it. Um, and a lot of times, that that there's a little specific there's a specific type of player um, when you're talking specifically about the Eagles' needs. Jeff, what is your opinion on why Sam Bradford has not been extended? And is it accurate to say that they haven't even really approached him about a, an extension? Yeah, they have. And I asked actually uh, Ed today, uh, kind of put him on the spot there, and said, that, you know, is it the Eagles' intentions to extend him? Um, he, of course, said that we'd like to keep uh, contract considerations private. Um, yeah, from what I understand, there hasn't been any uh, any uh, movement at all in terms of uh, a contract. I think you would you would believe the Eagles would want to get him extended, but at the same time, um, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure what would be value. You know, what what would be the the point of doing to have an injured player like Sam Bradford um, have him play those contract? If he does play better, then then of course extend him in the off season, or if he's you know, or if he can't get a long term deal, you can always franchise tag him. So uh, I wouldn't really read too much into that um, in terms of you know going going out the scenario. Yeah, you know, no meaningful talks for his contract there. And I, I guess that does make some sense to say, look, you're injured. We can't make a long-term commitment to you until we know that. Is it your understanding that Sam, though, would like to stay here and extend as opposed to some of the other places, you know, that he did not want to extend his contract? Yeah, I mean, the impression I get is that he would be willing to talk with the Eagles um, and, and perhaps, you know, if he were to get traded to a team that he wasn't as happy to be a part of, uh, maybe he'd be less willing to do so. Uh, Jeff, draft's coming up. couple players on the current roster. I want to get your take on uh, whether or not they will be moved and what they can get back. How about Brandon Boykin? Do you think he'll be moved on draft day? Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously, with you know, Chip has always talked about um, size and parameters you have for each position, and, and Brandon, a lot of ways, don't doesn't fit that. Now, in the slot, he may fit it, uh, but as an outside corner, uh, he, he has not. That's why he hasn't been out there. One of the reasons why he hasn't been out there. Um, so I think they probably could get something in return for Brandon. But again, as a nickel, I don't think they're as concerned with the with the cornerback being five foot, uh, six foot, and long. Um, so I, my gut tells me that Brandon probably be back, but uh, you know, I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, obviously, Kendricks would be another guy. I mean, he was not there. I guess a planned vacation for him. But uh, do you think that he's a guy that could be moved as well? He's the number one guy I'd have on my list is most likely to be traded uh, during this draft period, um, whether it's a part of package to move up or package to get someone else or, or just to straight up get a, a different player. Not only because you got Kiko and D'Amico back, um, but again, also because I just don't think he's um, exactly what they're looking for at that inside linebacker position, Michael is very talented, and he played and he played well last season. Um, but when asked about Kendricks, Chip mentioned his injury and how he, you know, a um, little disappointed he didn't come back from that. Um, and that had that made you wonder. And also, again, going back to the size and team fit, 
I don't think they think he's ideally uh, a three four inside linebacker, probably more of a four three weak side guy. Um, he's less than five, you know, six foot tall, um, whereas they really want those linebackers to be longer and rangier. Talk with Jeff McLean of the Philadelphia Inquirer here on 97.3 ESPN. He's had Jeff underscore McLean. What is the deal with Chris Polk? I was asked about him earlier. I know he's restricted. He hasn't signed. But if he leaves, the Eagles get nothing back. They did not give him a tender where they get anything back, correct? Uh, that is correct. They get um, they get a chance to match, uh, but that's going to happen by tomorrow. Um, so... We'll see. I think what they're doing is that right now is they're trying to trade him, mm-hmm. um, uh, or they're, you know, they've given his agent the the luxury of maybe going out and trying to find another team that would be willing to deal something for him. But I don't know what you can get in return for Chris Paul. He's a nice player, uh, but he's been a little injury prone. Um, and, you know, Lastly, uh, Evan Mathis, uh, you know, obviously they can't trade him. It doesn't look like there's a lot of uh, takers out there because I guess the Eagles will just release him. Do you think it will get to that point where the Eagles just say, all right, we're going to cut you? No, I mean, I I don't think they're going to release him at all. Uh, I think they'll just keep him. I think the trade part of it is more, you know, Evan's not happy with his contract. So the Eagles have said, okay, well, your agent, uh, you guys can shop him and see what else you can get, knowing probably full well that it was going to be very hard for them to move, you know, almost 34-year-old. Um, guard uh, to get anything back in return, the Eagles would be willing to deal. So I think ultimately at back, um, but probably if he's back for the season, it would be probably his last. Jeff McLean from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Last one for you, Jeff. Obviously, Tebow is here. Manowitz said that he would be a quarterback only. If that's the case, which, you know, would be obvious here that he has never played another position, really. But do you see that if he's only going to be a quarterback, that he would be a legitimate possibility to make this team then? I don't think he said well, I think he's being brought in as a quarterback. I think that's more what Ed said. He'll compete as a quarterback. Doesn't mean that he won't he won't fill other roles. Um certainly and even Ed, uh, left it open that if, you know, with the new perhaps rules uh, with two point conversions, um that maybe Tebow could be used in that regard. I think if he makes the team it's gotta be as a third quarterback. Um but it's knowing that there's a chance that he can dress on game days and maybe help you out uh, in the red zone and perhaps those two-point conversions. All right, Jeff McLean, a week out from the NFL draft, and, of course, the Eagles have that 20th pick, but uh, we'll see if they make the 20th pick. Jeff, thanks so much, man. All right, thanks for having me.